We're gathered here at my favorite training company staff meeting to get Katie's uh, <laughs> professional expertise down on tape so we can figure out how to use this computer. Dave and I will ask her questions and here we go. Here's Katie. <laughs> uh, Katie, uh, show us how to uh, set the margins. And you can just verbalize, I'll verbalize the phases as you're going. If so you're right now I'm get just in getting into systematic right works. Okay. Okay. And I'll just bring you up a document of doesn't really matter, just to show what they wants to know how to do margins. Okay, um, margins would be underneath the format. You go to page. Mm -hmm. You can get top and bottom margins, left and right margins. Um, for the letterhead right here, this one, the big one. You always want to set your top margin. You go to the top of the page of the document and set your top margin at 2. You can either do that before or after you've typed it, and it will go underneath the letterhead, and that way it's already set. You don't have to return a lot at all. Um, if, if you want to center something for some reason, um, you highlight it. And then these buttons right here, that means the first one right here is the left margin, which is what you usually normally would use, unless there's a specific reason, you know, such as to spruce up your document. Here, that means it's centered now. This right here means it's right justified. It pulls everything over to the right of the document. And that's not normally used, and I really see no use to it. And this is full justification. It it takes your whatever you have at that and it pulls it so it's all even on the left and the right so spaces really don't matter um, you know how you're supposed to have two spaces between a period and the beginning of the next sen sentence it really doesn't matter it'll just pull it ever which way it wants it to get it even on the left and the right and that's good for when you're trying to make the document look nice or so forth like that but most of the times you will use that right there the left justification um, these right here are spaces between the lines, not returns, but just normal spaces. Um, because when you're typing, it just goes from one line to the other. This will put larger spaces in between the lines if that's what you want. Right now, it's just that single space, there's double space, and then here's one and a half spaces. So you could do that one more time. So there's single space, which makes it closer together. It's just right. one right after normal, the other. That's a normal letter. That's right. normally what you would use. And, okay. and you know, and then you put two returns after each paragraph. Here's one and a half spaces. Okay. Right here, you know, it makes a little bit farther between. Mm -hmm. And then here's double space. Okay. Show, show me the mechanics of how to move those margins now. The margins? Right. Okay. Go to format, page. Right. Um, you don't really have to have anything highlighted. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You change the left margin to, let's say, one and a half, and then you'll press OK, and it just moves the whole document I see. Okay, in. I saw the left hand side move. The left, okay. yeah, we did the left margin, so the left margin moved in, and that's good for special paper like we have um, for when there's one side that needs to be pushed over a little bit more because there's a border there. What is usually the normal size paper? Is it, I see there's a one, one to ten. In other words, the margin was originally set at one. At one. one. Yeah, the margins are usually set at one. But yeah, that's what you, um, you always, we always want to set our top margin to two no matter what you're using because it, you don't want it hanging at the top of the page. Otherwise, it'll just hang there. So, um, and most usually we use something with a letterhead on it. Um, uh, a non-letterhead page, can, the, the top can be moved to one? It, it can be at one, but it hangs, it looks, unless the document's pretty long, it looks like it's hanging at the top, so you okay. might want to set it for a top margin of two anyways, just to make it look nicer and look like it's not hanging at the top of the page. Okay. As a, if it's a full document thing, then I, it would be fine with when you're on a no letterhead paper. Okay. But um, normally the left and right margins are set at one, unless of course you want to change them for any such reason. The bottom margin you usually use leave at one. It will usually, it stops in plenty of time unless you have a big something down at the bottom that mm -hmm. you don't want it to hit. Um, then you would, you know, bring it up. How do you know when, you, when you get into the bottom of the page? Um, it'll, 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 um, you can see it. Let me show you. 
um, when you're typing, you'll go on down here. And now, let's see, right there. You can see that's the bottom of the page. How, how can you see? See the gray part right there? Oh, I see. And now, okay. and then see the gray part breaks, and then here's page two right here. Okay, so if you were going to do a page, start at page two, it, words, it'll just go on over to a page two. Automatically. Automatically. Unless, of course, it's like you want to do it separately. You want it to start at, stop at this certain point on page one and start again uh, at this different point on page two, and yet page one's not all filled up. Then, you know, you just return a few times and it'll go well, on well, down. Well, let's say that you're just writing a memo to someone, mm -hmm. and it's just a few lines on page one, mm -hmm. but page two is, the, is going to be the, the meat of what you're doing. How do you get from page one to page two, the same way you're doing it now? Uh, well, see here, um, the reason you just return until it, and it'll just tell you to the bottom of page one, and then it'll bring up page two. Otherwise, there okay. is no page two there. Gotcha. It's just a page one. Okay. And you know, um, since I did something to this document, such as I pressed return too many times, or it was down too low at one time, and so it added on a page mm -hmm. two. But so whenever I print out this one, I need to. Uh, when I go to file and print or control this right here mm -hmm. and P you know, well, where did it go? Oh there it is. I'll, I want to go from page one to page one because I don't need another page to feed through because it's blank and it just it just adds more time to what I want to do. Can you go back to the full letter again? Mm -hmm. Show me how to uh Let's say you want to you want to move the letter up or move the letter down. Okay. How how do you do that? Well, such as do you want to just set a larger top margin or well, a let's say top that margin? you find out that that the, you, your letter is too far down. You want to move up a couple lines. Okay. Okay. Um, if it's too far down, you'll need to go to format mm -hmm. and page and set your oh, top the whole margin. Thing. Okay. No, yeah. You, you can't move the letter up and down. Well, you can by okay. If I have my margin first set at one. Um, there's no way to move it up because that's, that's as, as far as it goes. As far as it will go. Um, since I had it set at two, um, that is the new margin, and inside the document, you can't just press delete and move the whole document up. You need to go change your top margin to smaller, but you can make it larger without going into the um, page and changing it. I can see it was at two, and um, I want to make it larger. I just press return a couple times. How do you, let's say you want to pull out a paragraph, how do you do that? Okay, um, you want to delete a paragraph. Right. Um, you would just highlight it. Okay. And go up to edit and clear. And that would just delete that whole thing I just highlighted. Paragraph or sentence or whatever you want whatever. to do. Whatever, yeah, just highlight it or just. Now will that, if it, will that move what's left up? In other words, will that move the paragraph underneath it up in its place? Um, I think it does. We'll try it and see, because that yeah. letter isn't... Um, yes, it moved it up. It did, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, if you do something wrong, underneath edit, just go to undo, and the paragraph is now back. Uh, that has to be at the same time, though. In other words, you can't leave the screen. You yeah, can, you, you can leave it. Just if you go on to do something else, then you can't go back and change it. But if you... Okay, just right after I, I went to this, edit, and clear, and you came running in and said, don't delete that paragraph. Mm -hmm. I go back up to edit and undo, and it brings that paragraph back. Okay. Uh, it, it almost moves that paragraph up. You might need to move it up a couple more spaces, but it almost has it all the way up okay. like you wanted it. When you, okay. when you do a, a, le a, a word or a paragraph bold, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you get to the bold? Okay, bold. Um, either you type it and highlight it and then change it to bold or you go and you get bold on the screen before you type it and then it'll just type it out bold. You go to text and you go to style. Go over and then go to bold. And then whatever I type in here, it's bold. And um, But let's say I wanted to highlight this much of the letter and I wanted it to be bold. And I go to text, style, and bold, and it'll bold that, wow. what I highlighted. Um, so you can either... It'll, it'll do it by itself. You can either just, yeah, type it in, and then go back and highlight what you want, go up to text, 
and style and go to bold. Or you can, if you know exactly where you want to bold, you can type, stop, go up to text, style, bold, type in whatever you wanted it to be bold, whatever you wanted to be bold, bolded, and then um, type that, and then when you're back to your regular print, then you just stop, you go to text and style, and plain text again, and it'll and then when you start typing from there, it'll plain, be plain text. But what you just typed before that will be bold. And if you erase that and try to type something else in that place, it'll be bold too. Because between that certain space, it's bold. And it's supposed to be bold. And, but you can always change that by going up to text and style. Um, show me how you bring the letterhead up. Okay, the letterhead. Um, letterhead is a separate file on its own. So I'd go to file and open. And I go to letterhead, right there, and I open it. I highlight it, so I can go to, I can either highlight it just normally, or go to select all. It'll select that. You go to edit, copy, okay, and then you pick out a, whatever program. I can either open a program or whatever. Um, so I'll just close this program. It's still ready to be copied. I go to the top. I go to edit and paste and there it's in there and it just it brought it up because I had it copied and you go to copy then you get into whatever program you want the letterhead to be on top of and you go to that program after you have selected it out of that one program and have it, have it copied and go to paste and then it'll paste it onto it but yet you still have the separate letterhead on a different program for whenever you want to bring it to and fro any place. So right now we have it in here. How did you delete that again now? I just highlighted it and pressed delete. Is it delete on the keyboard now? Delete's on the keyboard right here. If you're just deleting a word, you don't have to highlight it and then go to edit and clear. You just go to wherever it is and press delete, you know, and so forth. It'll delete. Or this button right here, which will delete what's behind the cursor. This delete button deletes what's in front of the cursor. This what behind it. It'll pull it into it. See? It just pulled the A and then the space and the A and it's just pulling them into it. And then... just pull them in. But this one will go forward and erase forward of whatever you want. Okay. okay. Um, let's go through the procedure to do envelopes. Envelopes. Alright, envelopes. Um, the easiest way I found out is just open a whole separate write document. Um, it's just the page and you don't have to save it. And we have an address of some sort of someone. So you type in their address. Does it have to be any particular place? Or just no, just type from right at the beginning. You don't even have to set a margin, a top, or anything like that. You just go in here and you write out the person's address. Um, and then after that you go up to format, you go down to the very bottom almost and go to envelope. Once you're in that, you make sure that it's on a number 10 envelope site. There's, there's different choices. You have 6 and 3 fourths, 9 and 12. Um, usually you'll be just using a number 10 envelope. You make sure the orientation is the one on the right, the one that's going up and down, not the one going side to side. The right orientation here, the one that we have highlighted. And then you go, okay. You come back, you highlight this, you go to File and Print Envelope. And then it'll bring up the print procedure on the screen. Then you take the envelope, facing it like this, you set it down on the printer, 
Yeah. And you move the farther spot over to where the little dotted line is. It has little pictures on the printer so you can see it. And you move it over and it'll hold it in. And then you press, you know, you can either use your cursor and then go over here and press down and it'll start, or you can press return and it'll just start printing. These have to be done one at a time, in other words. From what I've been able, make sure you always turn on the printer. <laughs> um, I haven't, I know there's a way that you can just make a list, and I'm sure we could just highlight it, and you know, just make a list going, going down, and then whatever address we want, highlight it. But I'm not sure if it'll work farther down the page, but I'm sure that it will. Um, that's something that can be tried out. I gotta go back to file and print envelope again because I did not have the print printer on. And now it's ready. And it'll run. Make sure that the envelope is face down with the flap opening backwards. Not towards you, but towards the opposite way. And make sure that it's closed in. The margin things over here are closed in. And you can see it when you're actually doing it. And the printer will just um, take the envelope through. It almost looks like it's going to bend it, but it usually doesn't. Unless it gets a hold of it wrong, you're okay. And there you go. You got the person's address printed out onto the printer. Is there any way to print a return address on there? Um, it says right here when you go to envelope, when you're getting your number 10 envelope and everything ready, it says right here, and format and envelope, it says right here, return address, and then written down it says that there isn't supposed to be any return address. Um, I have tried everything I can to get down into that box to let me type in our return address, and I haven't been able to figure it out yet. Um, I'm sure that there is a way, but right now I don't know of it. But okay. if there is a way, I'll find it, and the return address will be down here, and it should just print oh, out man, but, yeah. the return address along with what I have on the page. Okay. As we're much of the way through, this is a new paint job here, sort of bright, but you can see the terrific problems we're having with the wood. This is three or four coats. You kind of get the hang of it you go more and more. You work more steady with a lot less downtime because your mind gets focused on here to work. He's right in there. This is uh, inside uh, the bedroom. You can see the green bedroom here. These stains that you're looking at, which are numerous, uh, are cat piss, cat piss stains, right down in the vent actually. I want to show you this other one. Back up a little bit so you can get a perspective. Look at that. I mean, look at this. Basically, 30% of the floor space is cat piss. Look at that. All those stains, that's all cat piss stains. We pull this carpet up. Now the bunkhouse is like this. We've lost the carpet down uh, because of the problems. Uh, you can see the leftover water stain here, which we've gone over it a couple of times. Okay, that's in here in the same room. Terrific water stain problems in here, which don't seem to want to go away. We keep dealing with them. Wow, good morning. Okay, moving day. Moving day. Oh, look. Hello. Good morning. I just got out of bed with my clothes on. And, uh, wanted to show you the house. Got a couple of, uh, little, uh, dollies mounted yet, but poor Miss Sherry, she's off working. Smart little thing. This is the move. 
But did a good job on her room, huh? And they did a great job on their office. Very encouraging. I was not too encouraged last night. I'm just uh, going through the place so we can see it. See the condition that it's in. And, uh, <laughs> Dave. Okay, so I'm going here and punch a hole in Dave's wall. Let's clean this out. I got a little, little bit of more patching to do on the walls. 